In this video for Math 94, we are looking at applications of quadratic functions. This pertains to homework number 6, section 9, 3, and 9, 4. And these are like problems 9, 10, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 on this assignment. Okay, all of these problems use this idea. We've talked about this before. If you have a quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c, if this leading coefficient a is positive, then the quadratic parabola, the parabola when you graph this, points up, and the vertex is a minimum. If a is negative, then the parabola points down and the vertex is a maximum. To give you an idea, look at this quadratic function here. a has the value 1, a is positive, so you know just from looking at this that the quadratic function points up. If you graph this using some of the techniques we learned about earlier, you'll find out that the x-intercepts are minus 3 and 5, and that means the vertex, or the axis of symmetry, is halfway in between at x equals 1, and the vertex is at 1, negative 16. This vertex represents a minimum. Now, we tend to say that this function has a minimum value of negative 16. That occurs when x equals 1. I'll say that again, a minimum value of negative 16 that occurs when x equals 1. We're going to use this idea in these problems. Here's the first type of problem. The following equation shows the path of a ball kicked at an angle of 45 degrees relative to the ground. y equals minus g over v squared x squared plus x. The input x is the horizontal distance traveled, and the output y is the vertical position. The constant g is the average acceleration due to gravity, 32.2 feet per second squared, and v is the initial velocity of the kick. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means if you have some gal here who is kicking this ball, okay, and the ball goes up off the ground here, the horizontal distance x of where the ball is given, let's say x is something like 10, the vertical distance y is given by this minus g over v squared x squared plus x. Now, of course, the harder you kick the ball at this 45 degree angle, the faster it's going to, or higher it's going to go, longer it's going to go. So that's kind of where this velocity comes in here. Now, let's look at a problem. Suppose Rosa kicks a soccer ball at a 45 degree angle with an initial velocity of 75 feet per second. So just using this equation, that's minus g over 75 squared x squared plus x. Now, I'll put g in there, minus 32.2 over 75 squared x squared plus x. Now, I'm going to advise you not to simplify this for the moment. Let's see what the problem is. Predict the maximum height of the ball and the horizontal distance traveled. Now, if you look at this, you'll notice this is a quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a equals this constant right here, minus 32.2 over 75 squared, b equals 1, and c equals 0. Since a is negative, we know that this parabola points down. So the maximum occurs at the vertex. Now, it is most convenient in this case to use that vertex form minus b over 2a. In this case, that's minus 1 over 2 times negative 32.2 over 75 squared. Not too hard to do this. If you do this on your calculator, minus 1 divided by parentheses 2 times parentheses minus 32.2 divided by 75 squared in parentheses a couple of times, I get that this is approximately 87.34. Okay? Now, that is not the height of the ball. That is the distance that the ball travels right there. So, what would the height of the ball be? Well, that would be, plug this into the function, minus b over 2a. So I'm going to plug in this value, 87.34 into this. Okay, I'll move this up a little. So that's y equals minus 32.2 over 75 squared 
times 87.34, okay, squared plus 87.34. So I'll go ahead and do that calculation for you, minus 32.2 divided by 75 squared times 87.34 squared plus 87.34. If I do that, I end up with that this is 43.67 feet off the ground. That's quite a soccer kick that she has there. I certainly want that girl on my soccer team. But that gives me an approximate answer for that. And it's set round to the nearest tenth, so I guess I should really go about 43.7 feet. Now, the other part of the question is to find the horizontal distance traveled by the ball. Now, the horizontal distance traveled by the ball, eventually, this ball is going to come back hit it and hit the ground, eventually. When it does hit the ground, y will be 0. OK, y will equal 0 there. And so we're trying to find the x when y equals 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals minus 32.2 over 75 squared x squared plus x. Now, we'll pull out an x there. Minus 32.2 over 75 squared x plus 1. Now, you'll notice that one of these solutions is x equals 0. And that should make sense. The ball's on the ground before she kicks it. The other solution is minus 32.2 over 75 squared x plus 1 equals 0. If I move the x term to the other side, I get 32.275 squared x um, equals 1. And if I solve this for x, I have 75 squared over 32.2. OK, 75 squared divided by 32.2 should be about 174.7 feet. OK, now. That, you'll notice, is if you take 87.34 times 2, you get about the same thing. So this should be about halfway of that, as it is with all parabolas. So that gives me an example of how to do a problem like that. Let's look at another one. This one's a little bit different. Miguel has 72 linear feet of deer fencing for a garden next to his house. The garden is to be rectangular, with the house forming one side, as shown in the figure. What is the largest possible area? So this is a great picture here I have with the deer hanging outside. And I've got a rectangle here, length times width. But notice there's only three sides used because you don't need a fence against the side of the house. So what we're trying to maximize is we're trying to maximize the area. And the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. I'm going to call that A. A equals length times width. Now, this type of problem, this is what we call the optimization equation, or the equation that we want to find the maximum or minimum of. In order to solve this equation, what I need to do is now find a constraint. We don't have an infinite amount of fencing. He has 72 feet of fencing. And we know for the fencing, he's going to need two w's, right, a w here in a w here, and he's going to need one length here. And that that has to equal 72. Now, the idea here is to take this constraint equation, solve for one of these variables, either l or w, and then substitute that into your area equation. It's much easier here to solve for l. So I do that. Now plug that into my area equation. Instead of L, I'm going to use minus 2W plus 72 times W. And that gives me minus 2W squared plus 72W. Now, I'm excited. Reason? This is a quadratic equation. And since it's a quadratic equation, it's a w squared plus b w plus c. a here is negative 2, b is 72, c is 0. Since a is negative, I know that this points down. If this points down, I know that the vertex of this 
represents the maximum. Since I'm looking for the maximum, I'm going to find that vertex. I'm going to use this minus b over 2a formula for the axis of symmetry again. That's minus 70, 72 over 2 times negative 2. That's minus 72 over negative 4. 72 divided by 4 is 18, so width has to be 18. I know that width is 18. Now, to find the length, I'm just going to go back up to this equation right here. Length equals minus 2 times 18 plus 72. So that's going to be 72 minus 2 times 18. And that answer is 36. So my length is 36. Now my area, I can use the formula that I have here. Or I could notice, hey, this is just width times length. 36 times 18 is just 648 is my area up there. So in this problem to review, you find the example that you're to minimize or maximize. You find a constraint. You solve the constraint for one of the variables and substitute that into the other optimization equation. That should be a parabola. Find the vertex, and that should give you your answer. OK, here's another equation, a little bit uh, different. We have cliff diving. Cliff diving is a popular tourist attraction. The cliff divers dive from an initial height of H0 meters above the water. And I'm going to assume that h equals 0 is the water level. In the metric system, the acceleration due to gravity is a g is approximately 9.81 meters per second squared. So these guys apparently run towards the cliff and just jump off. So the vertical motion is going down here. And this right here is supposed to be h equals 0. And this h naught up here is equal to 40. So suppose a drive diver runs to the cliff edge and dives without any upward motion. This means there's no initial velocity, v0. Write a vertical motion equation to estimate the number of seconds required to reach the water. So the vertical motion equation, which would be given to you, is minus 1 half gt squared plus v0 t plus h0, where this is your initial velocity. And this is your initial height. Now, just a word about those. Initial height is how tall you are off of ground level. In this case, h equals 0 is the water level. Initial velocity is if he were jumping up into the air, he might have an initial velocity. Um, but in this case, he doesn't because we're saying there's no initial velocity. And this is the acceleration due to gravity. So in our case, this is minus 1 half. 9.81. I'm going to use 9.81 because these units are metric. If it were US units, I would use 32.2 here. The initial velocity is 0, and the initial height is 40. So this ends up being minus 1 half, 9.81 t squared plus 40. And I want to know, when do we reach the water? I don't want to know his maximum height. I want to know when we reach the water. When we reach the water is when y equals 0. So look at this equation. This equation right here is pretty easy to solve. 0 equals minus 1 half, 9.81. t squared plus 40. Get that looking t there. I'm going to subtract 40 from each side. And I'm going to let the calculator do all the heavy lifting at the end. I'm going to divide both sides by minus 1 half, 9.81. And then that will get rid of this. So this is 40 over, minus, over 1 half, 9.81. And that equals t squared. Now we're going to take the square root of each side. Now, you might be saying, don't I need a plus or minus? But not in this case, because this is a positive time is the only thing that makes sense here. Let's uh, use our calculator to finish this up. So I'm going to clear this out. 
I'm going to take the square root of 40 divided by, then I need a parentheses, 1 half, parentheses, 9.81, end parentheses for the 9.81, and then I'm going to end parentheses for the denominator, and 1 for the square root. So t is approximately equal to 2.9 seconds. Okay, and that was the solution to the problem. I hope you have found this video helpful.